How's this for the creepiest spider ever? It's huge. It's got disgusting eyes. You can play with them, pull one side and make the other side retract. And when you're finished, all you have to do is pull the thing at the bottom and you reset the eyes. It's made from a super soft yarn. It has bendy legs. You can manipulate it into any shape you like. I'll also teach you how to make different eye options if you don't like these eyes. This spider is enough to make any arachnophobe's hair stand on end. So please join me now and we'll get started. For the spider's body, I'm going to use the Yarnspirations Bernard Velvet Plus. This is a 300 gram ball and they recommend using a 9mm crochet hook but I'm going to be using a US size 16 hook and that's 11.5mm. You can make the spider's body with anything you like. You can use some kind of ball or you could stuff it with regular stuffing. I want something heavy so I thought of a lawn bowls ball or a weight training ball. This one has soft sides. Or you could use a bocce ball. This is filled with water. Or if you want a light one, you could use a large size high bounce ball. I'm going to use a regular size high bounce ball for the head. And I'm going to use a bocce ball for my spider's body. It's about four and a half inches or 11 and a half centimeters in diameter. We're going to start with the spider's body. And as always, I have an anchor knot in the end of my yarn. This is so that it won't come undone when we've finished. We're going to start with a magic ring. And first I'll make a slip stitch to anchor the work, like this, and then I'll do one single crochet. Then I'll do seven half double crochets. So do seven half double crochets and then we'll close the ring. When you've done seven half double crochets, then you're going to need to tighten that um, yarn tail and close the center. So pull it tight and there there are no gaps so there's the end of the first row. For the second row we're going to crochet two half double crochet stitches into that first single crochet stitch and then increase every second stitch after that. Remember to crochet in your tail and when you get to that loop make sure you crochet that in to anchor that tail. So we're increasing every second stitch. When you get to the end of that row, it's a good idea to mark where the beginning of the next row is. I'm going to just put a piece of yarn there as my marker. In row three, we're going to do the same as row two. We're going to increase every second stitch. So just go ahead and increase every second stitch until you get to the end of the row. And I'm going to check it on my ball. You can see that it's starting to fit very nicely and it's going to crochet up very quickly. So let's go on with row four. For row four, I still need to increase a little. So I'm going to increase every fourth stitch. You can see that we've enlarged enough so that the body will fit around the ball. And so now we're going to do one row. Row five is going to be one row of only half double crochet stitches, one stitch in each space. You can see that the ball is more than halfway covered now. So for row six, we'll decrease every fourth stitch. So this is what we do for row six. You'll do a half double crochet in one stitch, a half double crochet in the next stitch, and a half double crochet into the third stitch. We're going to crochet the next two stitches together. So you do a normal half double crochet beginning here, and then you put your hook into the next stitch, pull some yarn through, and then pull through all of them. So there's your decrease. Just do that until the end of the row. The ball can still fit smoothly into our crochet work. So you may be able to do a few more stitches, maybe half or maybe even the full row seven before you have to squeeze the ball back in. For the next row, we're going to reduce every second stitch. I'm halfway around row seven and I don't think my ball is going to fit if I keep going. So I'm going to squeeze the ball in now and then I'm going to keep crocheting and keep reducing with the ball inside now. So make sure you keep a watch on where you're up to so that you're going to be able to fit your ball in and won't have to undo too much. 
I still have a few more stitches to the end of my row 7 so I'm reducing every second stitch. It's a little harder to do when you're crocheting around the ball but this yarn is quite soft and, and pliable so you should be able to do it. For row 8 we need to reduce every stitch. That's the end of row 8 and I'm going to stop there. I'm going to use a regular high bounce ball for the head. It's 2.5 inches or roughly 6.5 centimetres in diameter. So we're going to start row 9 now and this is where we're going to attach the head. For row 9 we're going to increase in every stitch so do two half double crochets in each stitch until you get to the end of the row. For row 10 we still need to increase a little and we're going to increase every fourth stitch. The ball fits perfectly now so for row 11 we'll only do one half double crochet in each space. The ball's covered now and we just need to close the top so for row 12 we're going to decrease every stitch. That's the end of row 12 and all we need to do now is to sew the end closed. First of all we need to do a single crochet so that the height of the half double crochet stitch going straight into sewing doesn't leave a gap. Pull your yarn through and then either using a sewing needle or a crochet hook whichever you find easier, pull the yarn through the front loop of each of the stitches in the spider's head. Continue all the way around until you reach the single crochet stitch that you did last. Then pull the yarn tight to close the gap. Then using a needle sew in the top up and down a few times to anchor the opening there and then sew down the side of the face to the neck area. Then we're going to sew around the neck a few times to tighten it up so that it can't come loose with wear and tear. Then tie off and hide your ends and you've finished the body part. To make the spider's legs you're going to need 8 ply yarn. I have 100 grams of 100% acrylic here. You're going to need bendy hair curlers like this. They bend any which way but they're going to make great spider's legs. And I'm using a 5.5mm crochet hook. I had two different brands of 8 ply yarn. The one on the left is considerably narrower than the one on the right. So I used it as an opportunity to check and see how many stitches I would need to cast on for each one to make it fit around the bendy hair curler. So for the ones on the left I cast on with 8 on my um, magic ring and the ones on the right I cast on with 7 on my magic ring. So you're going to have to take into account both your yarn size and your tension to work out what fits best on whatever you're using for your legs. To make our spider's leg we're going to start with a magic ring. I always have a knot at the end that I can use as an anchor so that my magic ring won't come apart. Make a circle around your fingers and do a slip stitch. Then cast on 7 single crochet stitches. Pull your ring tight to close the gap in the centre. Then as you work the next row, crochet your tail into your work. I'm going to do an increase on the first stitch. So we'll do two single crochets into the first stitch. Then we'll do a single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase and alternate to the end of the row. This is exactly the right size for my bendy hair curlers. Your bendy hair curler size may be larger. If it is, then you may need to do an extra row with a few more increases to fit around your bendy hair curler. But this is the right size for mine. So the first thing I'm going to do is to trap my anchor loop that I've made at the end of my tail. That way it can't come undone if children play with it roughly. So I put the hook through the next stitch and through the loop and then I'm going to crochet through both of them and I'll do that again for the next few stitches until it's anchored nicely. Then we're going to do one single crochet in every stitch until the end of row 25. So I just finished row 25 and this is roughly where I'd like to start the curve in the spider's leg. So for rent, row 26 what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
crochet two single crochets and then I'm going to do four half double crochets so here's one two three and four and what this will do is by making these stitches slightly larger than the other stitches this will be able to make that shape around the top of the spider's knees so the rest of the row will do just single crochets now for row 27 we'll just do single crochets for the whole row we're going to repeat this pattern of half double crochets in rows 28, 30, 32 and 34. So I've just finished row 34 and with those five rows of half double crochets in the front you can see that that's starting to curve. With the bendy hair curler inside there it will bend however much you want it to. So for rows 35 through to 49 we're just going to do a single crochet in each stitch. I've just completed row 49 and what I'm going to do is for row 50 I'm going to do half a row so where you have your um, half double crochets here fold your work in half and just crochet single crochets to the opposite edge and then we'll use the front and back of rows 50 for the front and 49 for the back to crochet them closed like I did on this one and that will give you a nice even fold over at the end otherwise it twists up a little because of those increases around the knee then we're going to insert the bendy hair tie so 49 and a half stitches for me makes that a very nice snug fit around the leg and now I'm going to crochet this shut by doing a single crochet through the front and back loops that will give me an edge to work with when we crochet it onto the spider base. Next we need to make a base to attach the legs to. The yarn we use to make the spider is very soft and it will stretch if you try to attach the legs to it. So we're going to make this base plate to attach the legs to and then attach to the spider. First we need to have a knot in the end of our yarn to use as an anchor. Acrylic yarn is notorious for being slippery and the magic ring can come undone so it's better to have an anchor point. First of all we'll do a slip stitch to anchor our yarn and then we'll do one single crochet. Then we'll do nine half double crochets. So you should have one single crochet and nine half double crochets and then you're going to tighten the, the ring at the bottom make sure it's securely closed and then we're going to do a half double crochet into that first single crochet stitch. This creates a little step up to go around each time as the rings increase without it having a little gap in there. So from now we're going to do an increase in every second stitch. So do an increase in one stitch and then a half double crochet in the next stitch until you get to the end. I've crocheted in the tail the whole way around in row two and now it's time to crochet in the anchoring point. I didn't crochet it in the last two stitches so there wouldn't be a bump in my work and now I'm on an increase and I'll crochet the loop into my increase so you'll go through the next stitch and then through the loop in the back and crochet it all together to anchor it. If your loop's big enough crochet it in a couple of times to make it really secure. You should have had five increases in the last row. We're going to make this into a very decidedly pentagon shape. We want to have sharp points to attach our legs to. The bottom side is slightly wider than the other sides only by one stitch, but we need it wider because it's going to be across the bottom of the spider and the other rows are going to be closer to the front of the spider. Now it is helpful to to mark your work so here's how I mark my work with just a scrap of yarn and so I'll be able to see when I get to the next row it's easier on most colors but black is a little bit difficult to see so for row three what we're going to do is we're going to do a half double crochet in each stitch that wasn't an increase and in the stitches that were an increase here's my increase here you can see there's two half double crochets there I'm going to do three half double crochets in that space 
So there should be five places where you do three half double crochets as you go around. So it will actually be an increase every third stitch and that third stitch is going to be three half double crochets in that one stitch. You should also be able to notice that between each of our increases there were two stitches with one half double crochet in each but on the base there should be three spaces where you've got one half double crochet in each space. For row four what we're going to do is we'll crochet a half double crochet into the first of our increase point. See we had three half double crochets in one space there. We're going to do a half double crochet in the front stitch and then we're going to do three half double crochets in the back the second of the stitches. So you're going to have one, two, three, four um, stitches where you do one half double crochet in each stitch. That's the front of that three half double crochet, remember, from our increase before. And then we're going to do three half double crochets into the second of those spaces. So do that to the end of the row. At the end of row four, do one single crochet stitch and then we'll hide our work by sewing that stitch through um, to make it nice and neat. We're going to need enough yarn to crochet um, it into the, the body of the spider. So I'm going to cut off quite a long tail here. I'll pull that whole thing through. Then what you do is you go into the next stitch through both the front and back as you always do with crocheting and then you go into the the stitch that this piece of yarn came out of. I don't know if you can see that very well because it's black but this stitch came out of that hole so we're going to go into that hole and I also go into the little um, the little part of the stitch down below that and I just pull that nice and neatly there so you can hardly see where it's finished there and we're going to attach the legs to this point and this point. Now it's time to attach the legs. I've actually tied my um, row marker onto here so it doesn't come off while I'm sewing it on so that I can remember that that is the bottom part that's going to go over the back of the body so it points down towards the back. You may remember that I've used two different kinds of yarn. One was a softer, thinner yarn and one was slightly thicker. I'm going to put the thicker legs towards the back and it's going to be very hard to show you how I do this. So I'm going to tell you first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crochet these legs onto the reverse side because this is what I want to be showing at the bottom. So I'm going to crochet them onto here with the legs overlapping slightly like this. So in that small space there we're going to fit both of the legs. So there'll be some attached here and then the rest attached here. And the same for the front. We're going to attach one of the legs here and one of the legs here and overlap them. When you attach the legs it's very important to make sure that your um, knee shape is on the top side of your work. I'm crocheting into the bottom side of the plate because I want the plate to be under the spider and the neater side to be visible. So I'm going to crochet this leg into here but I need to make sure that the knee is on the right side. It's very hard to crochet it with it bent so I'm going to straighten it now but make sure you check that before you crochet on. You don't want to find later that you've made a mistake. So I'm going to pull the yarn through to the back and then I'm going to crochet through the top of the leg and through the base plate outer stitches. So I'm just going to pull that through and then I'm going to crochet in the next stitch and pull it through and pull it through that first stitch. So it's almost slip stitching it onto your work. Then I'll pull all of the yarn through there at the end 
and crochet one chain and pull the whole thing through in that last chain and then also all of these in together in the center later and then I'll attach my next leg on top of that and slightly behind because that's going right up to the point so I'm going to do this one stitch further behind that stitch remember to make sure your knees are going in the right direction them out so that I can work. Now through the front of this and through this stitch. So I'm basically attaching it one stitch behind what I did for the previous leg and I'm going to crochet into the top of the leg itself. That's really hard to see but just a minute, there's yarn everywhere. So what I'm doing is I'm crocheting into this new leg and I'm crocheting into the top of the previous leg that I've already attached. So into here, this would be the top of the plate. This is the top of the leg. This is where I'm going in to attach it. I want this leg to look slightly longer. That's why I'm going into the top of the other leg. Is the last stitch. Then I do one more through to pull the yarn through from behind there. So I'll pull that through there and then that was my single um, single chain and then I'll crochet this on and pull that tight and we'll secure those later as I said before. So there are the back legs attached and now I'm going to attach the front legs here. So I'm going to use this, the same hole this leg went through and I'm going to pull the yarn down through so I can access it from the back. Then we crochet through the top of this leg and through the next hole here pull some yarn through both then go through the next stitch in the leg the next stitch in the base plate pull the yarn through both and then through your stitch at the top and keep doing that through the leg through the base pull some yarn through all of those and keep going until you're finished. There's not many stitches at the top. Pull my yarn through there. Pull it through the stitch. Do a single chain and pull that through. So there's three legs attached. You can see all the knees are in the right direction. And now we're going to crochet on the last one. So I overlapped most of the back legs. There are two stitches that are not overlapped. So we'll do the same for the front legs. So I'm going to, how many stitches are there? There's one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do one, two, three stitches in here. So I'll pull my yarn through the fourth stitch and remember that, oh wait, don't forget your knee, make sure it's pointing in the right direction and remember that we were crocheting through the leg itself, not the base plate to give that um, the leg shape so that they aren't all pointing out in one direction, they're splayed. That's what you want your spider's legs to do. Pull the yarn through all of them, through the next one, through the front of that leg. And then for the last two stitches, we're going through the spider leg, through the leg base. Wait, there's a bit of yarn there that needs to go over there. So through the leg, 
through the base, through the leg, through the next stitch in the base. Then we'll go through the base point here, pull the yarn through, do what would be one chain and then pull your yarn through and secure that. Make sure your knees are all right. If not, undo and redo. I had a leg going the wrong way. So now you can see how those legs are going to be all splayed out like a normal spider's legs. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Now that the legs are all attached, we need to attach this plate with legs to the body. What you need to do is to sew all of this onto your spider's body at the bottom. So the point at the top with the legs that are close together will sew on up close to the base of the head and the bottom part that doesn't have any legs attached of course will sew to the body part there. It's going to be too difficult to record the process of that because it's a bit too big and chunky so I'm just going to sew around here and attach it all to the body as I go around and I'll show you when I'm finished. I've sewn on the legs now and I actually sewed around twice to make it stronger and when you flip it over I've also sewn the head to the body a little bit up here so that it's not going to be a lot of pressure on just one point there so it's sewn across the bottom and it's sewn across the top as well and I did that twice. Now you can bend your legs and make your spider look like the creepy spider that it's going to be and here's our spider. The next thing that we have to decide is what eyes to put on. These are the spare eyes from the frog that I made if you've seen my frog video, the door stopper. Or you can make some bigger eyes, you can do whatever you like. There are so many things you can do with spider's eyes. Spiders actually have several eyes, I think it might be eight maximum but I'm not sure of that. You can make regular round shape eyes like this. You could make like an almond shape eye. All of this is controlled by where you do your increases. So for a basic eye, you start with a magic ring of eight and then you increase every second stitch. And then in the following stitches, whether you increase or not will, will determine how big the eye itself is. If you want a smaller eye, you'd start with a magic ring that's less than eight. You could even start with perhaps five and make a smaller eye. This eye is quite domed. Here I've made an almond shape eye almost. It's not too almond, but it has a lower rise, so it looks more flat on the head. My children actually said they prefer to have a spider with no eyes. They said that it looks scarier with no eyes at all. I also tried making some pretty scary looking eyes. Here's a scary looking eye with no veins. Here's a scary looking eye with the veins in the eye. I do like just the cute little eyes, like this. I think they look pretty cute. But I'll show you a sample of how to make these eyes so that you can choose to make those and I'll show you a sample of how to make these eyes as well. And if you are going to make an almond shape eye, the way that you do that is instead of doing even um, increases around your eye. What I've done for this one is I did even increases around for the green and then once I got to the white I did increases only on either end. So I did two increases in that stitch and two increases in that stitch on the green and then when I came around for the second time with the white I did three increases there and three increases there on either side and that would give it more of an almond shape. So you decide what eyes you like and I'll teach you how to make this basic eye and this creepy eye. For the eyes I'm using an eight ply cotton in purple and white and I'm using a piece of red to make the veins and I'm using a four millimeter hook. To make the eye I'm going to start with a magic ring with eight stitches. So first we do a slip stitch to anchor the yarn to the magic ring and then we start our stitches. 
So we're going to close our magic ring but not, not tight because I'm going to use a safety eye in the center. You don't have to use an, a safety eye, you can put a little black dot there yourself um, either by crocheting one or using some kind of mark of some kind. But I'm going to leave a space here, I guess you can see in the center, for the safety eye to go through. If you attach it now, you won't be able to crochet because the safety eye will be covering the holes for the stitches. So don't do that. Wait until you've done at least the second row. For row two, we're going to increase every second stitch. So I'll do two single crochets in the first stitch. And I'm not going to crochet the tail in because you need that to tighten and it would be too hard to tighten if you've crocheted it in. So for the second stitch I'll do one single crochet, then we'll do an increase, so two in one, one in the next one, two in one, one in the next one, all around to the end of the row. So we'll pull the th yarn through at the end of the row, put the yarn tail onto a needle and then we'll sew through the next stitch and then back into the top and the back loop of that stitch you've just done. And then it's very hard to tell that that is, has been sewn. It looks like a regular crochet stitch. For row three, I'm going to change over to white. I'll make a slip knot and then I'll go into the back of one of the stitches, it doesn't matter which one, preferably not the stitch that you've just um, sewn in, any of the other stitches would be fine. I put that slip knot through the back of one of the stitches and then I start crocheting into the next stitch. So what I'm planning to do is I'm going to do a single crochet in each stitch the whole way around. The reason why I'm choosing not to increase on this row is because I want the stitches to look very even. If you have a look at this sample eye, I've crocheted one single crochet in each stitch and it looks very even. I made another sample using yellow, I'm sorry I should have used a different colour. But this sample has an increase here and a single crochet here, increase here and a single crochet here. The problem with increasing on the next row is that it can cause these um, colors to be wider and narrower um, because the stitches are forcing them apart. So it looks far more even if you just do a single crochet in each space when you're doing the color change. So I've left the center hole there so that we'll have space for the safety eye to go in. Once I put the safety eye in I'm going to tighten by pulling the yarn here. Pull it as tight as you can without breaking your thread and then you put the clasp on the back. You can usually push it on tight enough with your fingers but if you have trouble with that you can use a washer or whatever you find that fits well onto the back of your safety eye. I've actually found a TV wall mount to be the best thing for me to use because I had one lying around and you just put it over top of the base and push down and that locks that safety eye into the tightest possible position. I'm going to increase because I want my eye to still look a little rounded like this purple one. This green one I did a few increases but you can see that its size is much smaller. You can control how big your eyes are based on how many increases you put here. So it's, all, it's always a good idea to do a little bit of experimentation so that you can learn how it works for one and so that you can create the best eye for whatever project you're working on. For the next row I'm going to increase every fourth stitch. So I'll do an increase here in the first stitch and then I'll do a single crochet in each of the next three stitches and then I'll increase on the fourth stitch. For row five, I'm just going to do a single crochet in each stitch. Now I'm going to tie all of these loose ends from the bottom together so that they can't come undone. I'll just do a regular knot in here. For row six, I'm going to start reducing the size because I want it to come closed. If you're just making a straight, plain white eye, this would be where you'd end and just sew it onto your spider. But because I'm making a round eye this time, I'm going to keep going and reduce the size. So I'm going to decrease every third stitch. 
So I had an increase here and I don't really want to do my decrease immediately over my increase. So I'll crochet forward one stitch there, one single crochet, and I'll start the reductions from the next stitch. So go into the front of the next stitch and the front of the stitch after and crochet those together. And that will be your reduction. So you'll reduce every third stitch. So we'll do two stitches just straight with one single crochet each and then the next stitch will crochet the next two together in a reduction. So repeat that to the end of the row. Now you can control how quickly your shape reduces so whether you're going to get a round shape or whether you're going to get a more pointed shape based on how quickly you reduce your stitches. So in the last row I reduced every third stitch. In the next row I'm going to reduce every second stitch. I have a reduction immediately below this so I'll do one single crochet here and then I'm going to reduce every second stitch. The eyes starting to get just the shape I want it and I want to stuff it now. So I'm going to add my stuffing into the eye now and then crochet after that. So for row eight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce every stitch now. Instead of crocheting that until it became a ball, I wanted to crochet it with a little, um, a little part sticking out the end that we could then attach the colored tails to. So the last thing to do with this eye is to give it the scary looking veins. What I did to make the veins was I just got a piece of um, red yarn and stripped it down halfway. So I just opened it up and pulled apart two strands in each side and then just used one of those strands. So here is my strand and I just randomly started anywhere in the bottom and I just cro um, sewed into one stitch away each time. So there's one stitch away and then I came back into that stitch. Totally randomly sew into any stitch you feel like it. I only went up to the top stitch in half of mine and the other half I stayed down one stitch lower. So you decide what you think is cool for, for what you're working on. I'm going to go right to the top for this one. And then I'm going to come back down to this stitch here and make this one have a branch. So I think that one will look cool. And I'll come over to the next stitch over here. And then I just poke through randomly to another spot in the eye and keep sewing randomly just one stitch away from the previous stitch all the way around the eye until you're satisfied. So you can see the veins going in there. Now I'll start another one over this side. Again, it's totally random. I have no rhyme or reason as to why I'm poking it in certain holes. I just want it to look as creepy as possible. And then I'll go out the same hole I came in to start with and I'll use that to tie off. And I'll just put a knot in there. And then what I normally would do is just trim that off, put that back onto the needle. Then just poke that back into the same hole poke it through my work, pull tight, pull too tight, snip it off. As you snip it off, you can see that the ends that are still attached to the eye popped back inside, so you won't be able to see them. So that's how you make a creepy eye. Now you should be able to make it in any size you like, depending on how you start your magic ring at the top. And you can make a larger one, a smaller one. I think this one might be actually a tiny bit smaller, all depending on how quickly you increase or how quickly you decrease. So what I'm doing to connect the eyes is we need a tail of some kind to go through the head of the spider so that when you pull one side, the other side retracts. When you pull this side, the other side retracts. So what I've done is I've gotten some of the purple that I've used for this eye and some of the green that I've used for this eye and I've threaded them through the end of the crochet work at the bottom. So as you can see, 
there's it's just a piece of yarn that's been threaded through there so I've done that on the other side I just did it here to show you what I've what I've done and what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going I have braided the colors together here and I'm going to thread this through the spider's head and then I'm going to attach it to the bottom of the other eye I've threaded the eye that is attached to this tail through the spider's head. It's positioned about here. And I'm going to um, attach this other eye so that when you pull this eye, this one will come up. When you pull this eye, this one will come up. Or when they're both not pulled, they're kind of hanging down creepily. You could attach more eyes on top as well, like, like this and just have a totally, totally creepy spider. Or you could do whatever you like. But I'm just going to show you how I attach these eyes. What I've done so far to attach the eyes is to use the ends of the braids to go over several different places around the base of the eye to cover over the pointy end and blend it into the base of the eye. I've also used the one white yarn that was coming out of this eye and I threaded it through the stitches into the work, through the stitches again and into the work on a different point so that all that bottom is now covered. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie knots inside this eye to hide the knots inside there. So I'll thread the colors through to the same color preferably. So I'll thread this green yarn through to this green yarn and tie them off and then thread it through and cut it off like we did for the veins in the eyes. You can see that it's quite neat there. You can't really see where the knots are. They're all inside under here, so they're not going to be terribly visible. And remember when you're snipping them off, pull it quite tight. And then when you snip it, that, that loose tail end should flip back inside when you stretch it out again. My kids said they wanted a simpler system of resetting the eyes after you've pulled the eyes down like this and had a play. They wanted to be able to reset the eyes back into close to, to the head. I've used my hook to pull the connecting part through the head and then I'm going to attach some yarn. I'm going to put three long pieces of black yarn through and I'm going to braid them together. Then I'm going to put it through the spider and down to the base here and I'm going to attach it to a button so you can pull this to reset the eyes when it's finished. So I'm just going to braid those now and then show you how it works. I attached the braid to a needle then threaded it through the top of the head exiting at the back of the head then using the same hole you exited through, put the needle back in the same hole and go straight down through the body. So now, when you pull the eyes out and play with the eyes, all you need to do is pull down here to reset them. Now I'll attach the button down close to here. And you can button it into the bottom of the spider when it's not being used. So this is what it looks like when it's all reset. It's pretty creepy. I think we've done a good job. This is where I've attached the string to do the reset button. So undo it before you pull the eyes. Then you could pull the eyes down and make it an interactive toy for your children or whoever else wants to play with it. It slides very easily and looks totally creepy, especially if you see it front on. That's pretty disgusting. <laughs> I found it's easier to just pull that towards the center when you're resetting and then pull your reset cord here and it pulls the eyes back into place. Then when you're finished playing with it, you can just button this into the bottom of the spider. Just remember to unbutton it before you play with the eyes or it may pull the bottom of your work. You can bend it, put it in whatever position you like, terrify your friends and neighbors. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you will make your own spider and if you do, remember that you have the option of not making a creepy spider. Well, not quite so creepy. You can just put on regular regular eyes as I've shown you how to make in this tutorial. So as you can imagine, you could make a, quite a cute spider if you just put some plain eyes on there. You can put on as many eyes as you like. It doesn't have to be a creepy spider. I hope this tutorial was useful for you and if you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing to help my channel grow.
If you'd like to try another fun project, check out my squashed frog doorstopper tutorial. It's an easy project and it's hilarious.